Hi folks, this particular lecture is going to be a multi-part series on how you can integrate Ansible with GCP. So I hope you guys have fun and I hope you guys learn. So let's proceed. So what is Ansible? So Ansible is a tool that has three major functionalities. The first functionality is to provision resources. So if you are looking at it from a GCP point of view, it would be akin to provisioning things like your compute engine or your cloud function or even your cloud storage. Anything that is provisioned in GCP can be provisioned by Ansible. The second most important functionality is application deployment. So this would be like you've deployed your, or should I say you have provisioned your instances in GCP. Now we want to run some applications on top of that. So Ansible lets you do that as well. And the third primary functionality of Ansible is CI CD. So that is akin to what Cloud Build does for you. So that functionality can also be done by Ansible. So let's look at how the architecture of Ansible looks like. So Ansible is deployed in a machine called as the control machine. So this has to be a Linux machine. Currently Ansible does not support Windows. Okay, so now that you have created your control machine with Ansible installed on it, the next thing that you need to create is the playbook. So the playbook is a YAML based configuration file that has a list of instructions that can be executed by the control machine. It is of the format host and task. So what that means is that it will tell Ansible in the control machine that on this particular host, I have to perform this particular task. So let's provision some resources. So when you're provisioning your resources for the first time, the host would be the local host and the task would be all the tasks that you need to execute or create your resources like your compute engine or your cloud function or any other resources in GCP. So this particular playbook is read by the control machine. And based on the playbooks configuration, it can create instances. So it can create your compute engine or it can even create your cloud function. So that is how you can use your playbook to provision resources. You have to always note that when you're provisioning resources, the host would always be the local host on which you're running the control machine. Okay, so now that you have your resources provisioned, let's deploy some application. So to do that, the first thing you need is an inventory. So the inventory consists of all the resources on which you want to deploy your application. So your inventory would be created after you provisioned your resources. So your inventory would currently consist of two hosts, the instance one and instance two. Okay, so now that we have our inventory, let's create the application deployment. For that, we need to create another playbook. And in this particular playbook, the host would represent instance one and instance two. And the task would be that, okay, I need to install a web server on instance one and instance two. When that particular playbook is read by the control machine, an SSH is triggered to both those instances. And those set of instructions are sent directly to those particular instances. So the instance one will deploy the web server and the application. And once the deployment is done, the task which enabled it to install those instances disappears or it is removed. The same is done for instance two as well. So that's a set of tasks is sent to instance two. So instance two deploys those particular instructions like creating the web server and uploading the application. And once that is done, those particular tasks or instructions are removed. So that's it for the theory. Now let's deploy Ansible in our cloud shell and all the dependencies that are required. Now let's install Ansible. Now to do that, we'll be using our cloud shell and cloud shell will be the control plane on which our Ansible will run. So you can go to the Ansible page, the installation page, and it will give you this particular command to install Ansible. So you can just copy this and paste it there. Since I already have Ansible installed in my cloud shell, it will just tell you that, okay, everything is already installed. So after you've installed Ansible, the next thing you do is you install certain GCP based dependencies. So GCP provides certain modules that enable you to create resources in GCP. So you can go to the GCP page in Ansible and you can download all the dependencies. So the dependencies that you need are, you need the request and the Google auth installed as well. So you can just copy this and you can paste it. 
So everything is already installed for me. So those are the two things you need. You need to first install Ansible and then you need to install all the Google based dependencies. That is the request and the Google auth. So the first thing we'll create is we'll create a cloud function because I feel that's the easiest thing to do in GCP. So let's start by creating a service account. A service account contains all the credentials that you need to create resources in GCP. So I'll create a service account. I'll call it my Ansible service account. Click on create. And I will select the role of compute function admin. Sorry, cloud function admin. And I'll click on continue. Click on done. And what I'll do next is I'll create a I'll download the key for this particular. So I've opened this. Click on permissions. Sorry, click on keys and you can click on add key and you can create a new key which you can download in your machine. So once I have this key, I'll upload this to my cloud shell. So to do that, you can click on upload file and you can upload the file. So I've already previously uploaded a file. So I'll be using this particular service account key. Otherwise you could just upload whatever file you've just upload, uh, created. So I'll just cancel this. Okay, so now that you got your service account, the next thing you do is you go to the appropriate Ansible page, which lets you create a cloud function. So I'll do a Google search again. I'll do Ansible and I'll do cloud function. And it'll open the documentation that is required to create a cloud function. So you can go through this page and you can go through the example. So this is the example on how you need to create a cloud function. So you can copy this and you can create a playbook out of this. So let's do that. So I copied the code snippet and I pasted it in my notepad. So this is how my final playbook would look like. So it, so as discussed before in the presentation, the two important parameters are the host and the task that that particular host will perform. So the host would be the local host because we are running it on the cloud shell itself. The gather facts is something that I'll discuss later. The next is the task. So the task here represents that you would be creating a cloud function. And this is the module or the task that Google provides for you. And these are all the parameters that you need to fill in. So the name represents the name of the cloud function, the location as to where that particular cloud function will reside. The entry point is the hello get. And the source archive URL is the pointer to that particular code. So let's look at the code. So the code is basically just an index.js and a package.json. So let's open that index.js. So the index.js has a function called hello world. So this particular name should match with the entry point. So you can't have the entry point as hello bit. So I need to change this to hello world. So I'll just copy this and I'll paste it here. And the source URL again is basically a code that I have copied and I have uploaded it to my cloud storage. So I just copy this path and I'll paste it here. So you have to always make sure that the entry point always matches with your function name in the code base. So the next is the trigger HTTP, which is true. The project name is something I need to change as well. So I'll copy this project name and I'll paste it here. And the service account is basically the pointer to the service account file that I've just created. So I've, so I've changed the service account file as well. So it points to the JSON file that we just created with the service account credentials. So that's about it. I'll just copy this particular YAML file and I'll paste it. So let's create a new folder for this. I'll do a VI, create 
create and I'll paste the contents. Now the other thing to remember is that your service account here is trying to access a S3 bucket. So you have to give permissions to your service account to create uh, or to access your cloud storage. So I've given cloud object admin. You don't need to give this. You can just give a cloud uh, storage reader or viewer. That should be fine. The other role that I need to give to my service account is called as is called the service account user. Now the reason for that is if you go to your troubleshooting cloud function, you'll see that if you are not using your default service account, then you have to give this particular role to your service account. So I'll give a link to this particular URL in the description below. Just go through this and understand why I gave this particular service account this particular role. So I've given my service account three roles. One is the cloud function admin, the service account user and the storage object admin. So just remember that when you're creating this on your own, I'll cancel this. So let's go back to our cloud shell. And to deploy your playbook, the command that you need to run is ansible playbook and the name of your file which is create So what it says is that the runtime field is missing in your particular. So this is something that's not updated in this particular example. So let's add that as well. So I'll go back to my create. So my runtime is node.js12. So let's save this and let's just run this again. Okay, it has been created. So to check whether it's been created, you can go back to your, uh, so it should create a cloud function by this particular name, test object. So let's see if that has been created. So let's go to our cloud function. So you can see that a cloud function by this name has been created. So let's just open this. Open the source. So you can you can see that it's pointing to the same source. Click on index. It's hello world and back. So this is a small lesson on how you can create your cloud function. So this is going to be a uh, continuing series and I hope to make more lectures on Ansible and GCP. So I hope you guys had fun and please do not forget to subscribe. Thank you. Hey folks, welcome back to this continuing lecture on Ansible. In this particular lecture, I'll explain to you how you can install an instance in GCP using Ansible. There are a few ways to do it. The first and the easiest way to do it is using G Cloud. So in this particular lecture, I'll be explaining to you how you can use your G Cloud in Ansible to create an instance. So let's proceed and let's see how it's done. So to make this particular video concise, I've already created a script for you guys. I will be pasting this particular script in the description below. Meanwhile, I'll just go through that script for you guys and I'll explain each line and what that particular line does. So the name of this particular playbook would be just, just to create an instance in GCP. And again, it would be running on your local host. Then we define a few variables for a particular playbook. Now this particular variables I'll explain to you later. But before that, let's talk about all the tasks that this particular playbook would perform. So it would perform three tasks. So the first task would be to check whether G Cloud is present in your system or not. So how do you check this? So for checking this, you have to use a module called command. So as the name suggests, the command module would just run this particular command on your shell script and it will return an output back to you. And the output would be returned in a register called gcloud underscore output. So this is the first task. So the next task would be to check based on the output of this register whether you need to install your gcloud or not. So to do that, the second task would check 
when gcloud output is failed then print this particular message saying that please install gcloud in your machine if it hasn't failed then it will skip this particular fail and it will go to the third particular task so the third task is basically to create an instance in gcp again to do this we've used the gcloud command now to get this particular command you can go to your gcloud compute instance api and you can just copy any of the particular examples here so i've copied this particular example and i've pasted it over here the only difference is i have created two variables the instance name and the machine type so in this particular example the instance type is coming from the variables that i have set initially so the instance name i have set is my first instance and the machine type i have set is f1 micro so that's it so in total there are three tasks and there are two variables and these two variables would be used in your create instance in gcp command now let's run this particular playbook so to do that again i'll run the ansible playbook command and the name of my playbook so as you can see there are three tasks the first task was to check the second was basically the the fail which skipped which it skipped because there is gcloud installed in our cloud shell and now it's performing the third task of creating the instance which has been completed as well so let's go back to our ui and check whether it's created an instance You can see that it's created an instance called my first instance and let's check whether it's of type f1 micro so you can see that it's of type f1 micro so this is a very simple way of using gcloud to create your instance in ansible in my next lecture i'll explain to you explain to you how you can use the module that is provided by gcp the ansible module that is provided by gcp to create the same instance and i'll also explain to you how inventory works in gcp Okay. And also please do not forget to delete your instance. You can also create an Ansible script for that. So that's something you can test out on your own. You can use the gcloud delete instance using Ansible and run that and see whether that works. So I'll delete it here using the UI itself. Okay, I hope to see you guys in the next lecture and see you and have a great day ahead. Hello folks, welcome back to this lecture on Ansible with GCP. In our previous lecture, we had seen how using the command module, we could create an instance in GCP. In this particular example, I'll show you how you can use the GCP provided module to create an instance. So before we proceed, let's talk about what a module is. Modules are basically discrete units of code that can be used either from the command line or in a playbook task. So in the previous example, we had used the command module to run the gcloud version and the gcloud compute instance create and also prior to that we had used the gcp provided module to create a cloud function so please do check out the first particular lecture to see how that was done so if you want to find documentation on each module you can run the command ansible doc and the name of the module so let's go ahead and let's see what ansible doc for command provides us so now i'm back in my cloud shell so let's run the ansible doc for the command module so I will run and here you can provide the name of whatever module you like. So a few of the modules that are available include the command module, the shell module, the copy module. So let's see what I can get from the command module. So here the first thing you get is the path to your particular module. So if you just copy this path you see that the command module exists within this particular path and it also provides to you the arguments and all the other necessary inputs for this particular module. So similarly, if you want to find documentation for any of the commonly used modules, you can use the Ansible doc command to get all the information that you require. Also, one article that I found useful was the 10 easy to use modules in Ansible. I will provide the link for this article in the description below. So it tells you all the most commonly used modules within Ansible. So that includes basically the ping, the command, the copy, the yum module to install services, etc, etc. So please go through this document and check out the most commonly used 
Ansible modules. So now that you have your module, the next thing is how do you run your module? There are two ways in which actually you can run your module. The first way is basically within the playbook itself. So this is an example of the playbook that I ran previously and this contained the command module. So if I put the command module within the playbook and I run and I run that particular playbook, the module within it would also run. But if you want to just run that particular module and nothing else, then you can run it using the Ansible command instead of the Ansible playbook command that you use to run your playbook. So the command would be something like this. You provide the Ansible, the host in which you want to run it. The, the M would be the name of the module and A would be the command that you want to run. So here I would run, so here for, for this particular example, I just want to run the command module with gcloud version. So I would run something like this Ansible within the local host. I want to run the module command and the input that I would and the input that I would provide to it would be gcloud version. So let's test this and let's see how this works. So in my cloud shell, if I were to run gcloud version directly, it could it would give me this output. Now let's run this using Ansible command. So to do that, I will just run Ansible. Now I want to run it within the same host, so it would be local host. The name of my module is command and the arguments that I want to provide to it is basically gcloud version. So you can see that it basically returns the same output back to you. So this is how you would run your module in an ad hoc fashion using the Ansible command. So let's talk about Ansible Galaxy. Ansible Galaxy is a repository for Ansible modules, roles and plugins. Roles and plugins are something that we'll discuss later. And these modules are available to you directly for you to use. So Google provides an Ansible Galaxy repo for its particular GCP services. And in this particular lecture, we'll be using one of these services to create an instance. So the URL is provided below and to install it, you just need to run the Ansible Galaxy command with the install google.cloud. So let's look at this URL and let's see all the modules that are available for us to use. So if you go to the galaxy.ansible.com and if you search for Google, you'll get two results. The second result is basically an outdated collection of Google modules. However, the first one is what we need. So it currently has 170 modules which we can use. So let's open this particular collection of modules. So the first thing you would do is you would install it in your local machine. To do that, you can just copy this command and just paste it and run this particular command. So I have already installed it. So it's just giving me a skipping dot Google dot cloud as it's already been installed. So if it's not present, then it would install these particular collections that Google provides you. So let's go back to the contents of the, this particular collection of modules. So it contains quite a lot of modules that you can use. So the most important module that we would be using today is the GCP dot. Compute instance. So we will be using this particular module to create a particular GCP instance. So I have created a playbook by which you can create an instance using these modules that are provided to us. Now the variables that you would need would include the GCP project. So this is basically the project within which I would create my instance. The credentials types would be again a service account. The cre and the credentials file would again be the key to your service account. Now, and you can also provide the zone and the region as variables that you can use later on in the modules. So I'd be using three distinct modules. The first is the GCP compute disk. Now this particular GCP compute disk would create a disk for me that I would use in my instance. Apart from that, I will also create an IP address using the GCP compute address. So once you've created your disk and your address, you can use the GCP compute instance module to create your particular instance. And here, I will provide the network interface as null. So it will be created in the default network. And then the machine type would be F1 micro. So I create an instance of F1 micro. And then I can provide the address in the access config and the disk within the disk key. So this disk is basically pointing to the output of the GCP compute disk. And this address is 
pointing to the address uh, pointing to the output of the gcp computer address so once i have created all these three modules i can run this and it will create an instance for me so let's do that but before we do that let's try to get the documentation for each of these modules now again we'll use the ansible doc command to get the information that we need for a particular module so i'll be using the ansible doc and let's get the documentation for gcp compute instance so here again it will tell you where this particular module exists so it's within this particular path and again it will tell you all the parameters that are necessary and that are that can be defaulted to null so you can go through this documentation and check out the parameters that are required and the ones which are not for example the auth kind is required and uh, things like default protection can be defaulted to null so when you're creating it just read the documentation before so initially just try to create instances with just the required parameters and later on as you keep getting better at ansible you can create instances with more parameters so let's so let's run our playbook and let's see what the output is so the name of my playbook is create instance so again to run my playbook i would run the ansible playbook command again it would be in my local instance as well so i don't need to provide the host and i'll just give the name of my yaml file So it's creating my disk. So that has been created. Then it's creating the address, the IP address. So that's been created. Now it's running the GCP compute instance and creating the instance. So that has been created as well. So let's go back to our console and let's see if there is an instance that has been created. So I can see one compute instance has been created. So there was a compute instance with the name test slash VM. So this is the name that I gave in my playbook. So just to verify, I'll just do a VI of my create instance. So you can see the name that I gave was test hyphen VM. So it's the same name that's been populated here. And let's see if it's of type F1 micro. So you can see that it's of type F1 micro. So, so this is how you create your instance using the GCP provided modules. So in my next lecture, I'll show you how you can create dynamic inventory using Ansible and using the dynamic inventory, how you can install applications or software within virtual machines. Hi, this particular lecture is going to be on the inventory management system in GCP that is provided by Ansible. So this session is going to consist of two separate topics. The first topic is you'll create a private public key for SSH and you will use this SSH to communicate between your control machine and your instances, your virtual machine instances. And the second part is to be is to create a dynamic inventory file that will consist of all the virtual machines that you have created in GCP. So for this, we will need to configure two files, the ansible.cfg file and the inventory.gcp.yml file. The inventory.gcp.yaml file is basically a module that is provided by GCP which lets you dynamically which dynamically generates an inventory file for you to use. So the architecture is going to look something like this. The control machine or in our case the cloud shell will consist of the private key and using this private key and the public key that would be in the metadata of the GCP project we can create an SSH communication between our control machine that is a cloud shell and a GCP project. So once you've established an SSH, you, you would be able to run your Ansible commands or your Ansible playbooks directly in your virtual machine instances. So finally, after we've set everything up, we will run a ping command to see whether we are able to ping all the virtual machine instances that have been created. So let's proceed and let's see how this works. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a public private key. So I'll be using the putty key generator to do, to do the same. So let me generate my key. And the username here would be Ansible. And I need to convert it into an open SSH key. So I'll 
convert that and I will save this file so the next thing I'll do is I'll take the public key and I'll paste it in my metadata in my project metadata so here I'm in my project now let me go to my compute I'll go to metadata within the SSH keys I'll edit it and I'll add a new SSH key so I'll just paste the public key that I just generated and I'll save it so let me open my cloud shell now so I've opened my cloud shell so now let me just upload my private key so I'll upload file it's Ansible 2 so I've renamed it from Ansible to Ansible 2 so next thing I'll do is I'll just copy this Ansible 2 to my .ssh folder so let me go to my .ssh So you can see my Ansible 2 is there. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to configure the ansible.cfg file. Now when you initially install Ansible, the config file is not configured or it's not there. So to, so, so to check whether your ansible.cfg is configured or not, you can just run the ansible slash slash version. And if you find that the configure file is none that means your configure file has not yet been created so this has to be created in the slash etc slash ansible folder so let's go to that particular folder and let's create a .cfg file so for this i need to have sudo so let me do a sudo so i'll create a ansible folder which is also not there so the first thing i'll do is i'll create an ansible folder Now I need to create the ansible.cfg file. Now within this ansible.cfg folder, I need to add three entries, the remote user, the host key checking and the private key file. The remote user is basically ansible. So this was the user that I had given and the private key file is the part to the private key that I had just created. So I'll just copy this and I'll paste it. Okay, so with this we've completed our SSH part. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to create the inventory file. So to do that, we'll again go back to our normal user. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create our inventory file. So you can go back to your Google GCP configuration guide on how to create your dynamic inventory. So here it states that you have to create a .gcp.yml file. And this file should consist of these entries, the plugin, the project name, the auth kind and the service account file. So the service account file is basically the same service account we had used previously. The auth kind would remain service account and here you need to mention your project. And the plugin is basically the gcp underscore compute. So I'll just copy this and I'll create a .gcp.yml file. So let's create our uh, .gcp.yml file. So I've already created an inventory.gcp.yml file. So let me just show you how this file looks like. So this has basically the same configuration as is mentioned in this particular document. So again, it has a plugin. The project is basically the same project that we are in currently. The auth kind is the service account and the service account file is basically the path to the service account that we have created. So one more extra setting that you need to do is you need to also mention the path of this particular inventory file in your configuration file. So the .cfg that you had previously created. So let's do that as well. 
So here I have the path mentioned. So I'll just copy this and I'll paste it in my CFG again. So now we have finished all our settings. So the next thing we will do is we'll create an instance and we will see if that particular instance is available in the inventory file. So let's use the create instance.yaml to create an instance. So again, we will use the playbook that we had previously used in our previous example to create another instance. So I'll call the ansible slash playbook the create instance.yaml. Okay, a, an instance has been created. Now to check your inventory file, you can again go back to the guide and here it gives you the command to see your configuration or to see your inventory. So it's, so I just copy this command and I'll paste it there. And here the file name you need to mention is the inventory file that you have just created. So I just copy this. And the name of my inventory file is inventory.gcp.yaml. So you can see that it gives an output and it's basically under the all. So you can group your instances based on certain criteria. So I have this URL on how you can do that quite easily. So I'll send a link to this particular URL in the description below. So you can use this link to create groups within your inventory file. So it's better, so it's easier for you to organize those virtual machines. So for now, all the virtual machines would be under the all key. So now that you have your inventory, let's do something very basic. So let's try to ping this particular instance using one of the modules that we have. And the name of this module is called ping. So using this module, let's try to ping this particular instance. So to do that, the command is ansible. And I need to ping all the hosts that are there in my particular inventory file. So currently there is just one. So I will just ping this particular instance. So here, instead of localhost, I'll just mention as a whole because I want to ping all the instances that are there in the inventory file. So the next thing I need to mention is the module. So the name of the module is ping. So let's see whether I'm able to ping that particular instance. So you can see that I get a res response back from that particular instance and a success. So in the next lecture, we can see how using inventory, you can install softwares and packages to your virtual machines. Hey folks, <clears throat> hey folks, welcome back to my lecture on Ansible. So this is going to be part five. So in this particular lecture, we will use all the knowledge that we gained from our previous lectures to create a very simple architecture. So in this we'll create two instances one instance will host an Apache web server and the other instance will host a Nginx web server. So for this, we'll create a simple playbook called site.yaml. And this site.yaml will consist of three distinct playbooks. The first playbook would be run on the local host itself. And this will create two instances. The instance would be the Apache and the Nginx, which would be running on GCP. And after that, on the Nginx server, we will install Nginx and then later on the Apache server will install Apache. So I will be uploading the code base on GitHub. But before that, let me just show you a brief description on how the code looks like. First, I have my site.yaml. So let me show you the site.yaml file that I've created. So my site.yaml just imports three distinct playbooks the create multiple.yaml. So this is the playbook that will create all the instances, the apache.yaml and the nginx.yaml. So these two in, uh, playbooks, the apache.yaml and the nginx.yaml 
would be running not on the local host but on the respective servers and on the respective servers it will be uploading the respective web servers so apache.yml will install apache on that particular server and similarly the same for nginx as well so let's look at the create mult.yml file so if you look at this file it calls another playbook called create instance.yml and what it does it it loops through this particular playbook twice with these parameters and these parameters are basically names of the instance the disk and the address for that particular create instance.yml file and the rest are basically just the common configuration that includes the service account the project name the credentials file and the zone and the region so that's all that this file contains it basically just loops through this particular playbook twice so let's look at this particular playbook so if you look at this particular playbook it just consists of a sequence of tasks and this is similar to the one that we had seen in the previous lecture so what it does is it's, it creates a disk and here the name item.disk is basically taken from the loop itself similarly item.address and item.name is also taken from the loop and apart from this everything is same and it is basically the carbon copy of the code that we had used in our previous example so all that it does is it creates a disk it creates an address and it uses the disk and the address to create an instance so this is a very common way of creating an instance in gcp so apart from that now let's look at the nginx.yml and the apache.yml so if i do an so all that it does is it uploads the apache server and then it runs it and the other thing to note is that it's run on the apache host and it's not run on the local host and similarly the same applies for the nginx.yml file as well so here again nginx is just installed on the host and it starts the particular host and and another thing to note here is that you have to run this as a sudo so for that you need to run this command as become true the same applies for apache as well so now that we have this info let's try to run this particular application so to run the site.yml you can just call the ansible slash playbook and site.yml and here you can see that it runs the create instance twice once with apache and the next time with nginx and now it's installing the apache server on that particular host okay as you can see everything is executed properly so let's go to our web server and see whether apache and uh, nginx has been installed in the respective machines so let me just refresh this page so here you can see that two instances got created so the first instance let's just open the ip address and see so this would be an http so you can see that apache got installed here and similarly if i open the next one you can see nginx got deployed so this so this is just the default index.html page you can add your own html page and upload it this is a brief description on how you can create a very simple architecture using ansible hi folks welcome back in this particular lecture i'll teach you about ansible roles and how you can create a reusable component using ansible roles so what is an ansible role ansible role lets you automatically load variables tasks handlers and other ansible artifacts based on a known particular file structure and the good thing is once you've grouped these into roles you can easily reuse them and you can even share them with other users so in this particular lecture i'll teach you how you can share your roles between various users so the first thing we'll do is we'll use the playbook that we had previously created now this playbook contains variables and tasks 
So what we'll do is we'll break up these variables and tasks and we'll put them into a folder structure that looks something like this. So the variables I will put into the variables folder and the tasks I will put into the task folder and then I will package them into the folder and I will upload them into a repository that Ansible has created known as Ansible Galaxy. And from once and once I've uploaded this into Ansible Galaxy, I will download it and I will show you how you can use that particular role to create instances. So let's proceed and let's see how this is done. So let's start by creating a first role. So the command to create a role is ansible-galaxy in it. So this command I will paste in the description below. And then you need to give the name of your role. So I just call this my new instance. So the role has been created. So if I go into the folder, now, if you look at these folders, these folders have been distributed based on the tasks that it can perform. So for example, within the task folder, you can insert all the tasks that you want. And within the variable folder, you can insert all the variables. So that's what we are going to do. So I have my code here. So my code has a bunch of tasks and a bunch of variables. So what I'll do is I'll just copy all the variables and I'll paste it within the variables folder. So let me do that. So there's a main.yaml file that gets created. So I'll just open this main.yaml file and I'll paste the command. And similarly, I'll do the same for the tasks as well. Now, like I mentioned, this particular playbook file is to create a new instance in GCP. So I will be linking the playbook in the description below as well. So let me just copy these tasks as well within the task directory. So once this has been done, the next thing I'll do is I will upload this into Git and I will once I've uploaded my variables and tasks, the next thing I'll do is I'll do a git in it and I will upload this into my GitHub. So I'll do a git add and a git commit. So let me just quickly create a repo in my GitHub for this particular piece of code. So I've created a repo called Ansible role. So I'll get the SSH. I'll copy this. I'll go back to my console and I'll do a git remote add my instance is, and I'll just paste this. And now I can just do a git push. Now let me go back to my repo. So if I go to my master, so you can see that my code has been uploaded. So now let's create a role in my Ansible Galaxy. So the next thing we'll do is we'll upload this into our Ansible Galaxy repo. Also one more thing to make sure is that your default branch is pointing to master and not main so i'll just change this and i'll update it now i have logged in so let me log into my ansible galaxy so the next thing you need to do is you need to go to add content and import role from GitHub. So I've connected my repo, my Ansible Galaxy repo to my GitHub. So here what I need to do is I need to connect my particular repo that I've just created. So this is the repo, I'll click on OK. So you can see that it has been uploaded. So this is the new role that I've uploaded to Galaxy. So the next thing we'll do is we will use this particular role in our project. So let's see how that is done. 
So once you have opened the role that you've created, you'll get an installation URL. You can just click on this and you can paste it. Now, because I've already installed this once before, so if I want to install the latest version, I also need to include a force. But if you're installing it for the first time, the force is not required. So the role has been downloaded. So the next thing I'll do is I'll create a playbook that will be using this particular role. So I've already created a playbook like this. So it's very simple. It just has a host and a role. And the role is basically the role that I just created. So I'll just run this particular playbook. So you can see that it has created an instance. So let me just check that once. So I go to my project. So you can see that my new instance, this is the instance that I've just created. So this is there. So this is how you would create an instance using a role. So I hope this was a very useful lecture for you. And uh, please do check out the code. I will send the link to the GitHub repo in the description below. And I hope you guys will join me for the next lecture. Thank you.